Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to learn exactly how to achieve perfect halftone and Xerox separations in your artwork using my Magnum Opus, the Depth Tone Template. We've got quite the tutorial ahead of us, so let's get started. Alright, so Depth Tone is a drag and drop, but also customizable template that creates a gorgeous either dotted or stochastic halftone in your artwork in seconds. And it's extremely user friendly, but there's also really advanced results at hand. By the way, dotted halftones are the normal halftones that you see that are circular, and stochastic halftones means kind of like a grainy Xerox pattern. All right, so once you download Depth Tone, this is what you'll find in that folder. Go ahead and install this action file as well as this patterns file using the installation guide PDF that I included in here. I'm gonna gloss over that just to save time. There are also two Depth Tone PSDs in here. So we have Depth Tone Dark and depth tone light. Depth tone light is just used for artworks that have sort of a lighter background, so white or within that range. And then depth tone dark follows that logic and it is used for artworks with a darker background, such as black or in that realm of things. So I'm going to be demonstrating depth tone dark, but everything I will say applies to both of these. So no worries on shifting between the two. Once you open that PSD file, you're presented with this welcome page, which looks good, doesn't it? But you can go ahead and just delete this. And now we have the actual template in our hands. Just really quickly, make sure you don't delete this mask on the template group here by accident. That's going to be important later. So just don't make sure you don't do that. Either way, here we have our template. And inside the template, we have the controls for our highlights, midtones, and shadows of our artwork. And then at the bottom here, we have the smart object in which we can actually place our artwork in. So I'm first going to explain everything about the smart object and the kind of workflow that we could do when using depth tone. So go ahead and open up the smart object by double clicking on the thumbnail. That'll bring us into the smart object PSD. And we have our sample artwork here. And we have these groups here. We have a halftone group, which controls the halftone pattern, obviously. So we turn it on and off. And we see the halftone pattern here. And we have the grain pattern, which is the stochastic halftone that I was talking about earlier. You have textures here, which include three sample textures, two of them being from my warm plastic solid texture kit, and one of them being from my grunge texture kit. And these are here, obviously, so you can use them. And also to show you just how much of a nice vintage touch these, these kind of textures can give you. Aside from the textures, we have this adjustments group here, which just gives you some really quick adjustments that you can turn on and off in case your artwork needs it. This sample artwork doesn't, but in, in case you need something like really dark darks for your contrast on the artwork or really bright whites, then this is something you can turn on within the adjustments group. And then finally, we have the art folder, which is where you're going to place your art. And then this will be saved and integrated into the depth tone template. So there's two kind of workflows that you can go for here. You can either composite your entire graphic in the smart object of the depth tone. And that way you can kind of put them side by side and make changes as you go. Or you could just drag your finished artwork into the artwork smart object and then just save that and have that integrated into the template and then make changes as you need between those documents. I would say that the most efficient way would be to composite most, if not all, of your graphic within the depth tone artwork smart object here. And then if you really want, you could put the two side by side by going up to window here and then arranging this vertically. And now, oh, this is the wrong way. Okay, here we go. So you can arrange these two documents vertically, and now you can do all your compositing in the smart object here. And when you want to see the effects of that in the actual template, you can just save the smart object and that will update into this template on your left. So I'm just going to show you what that could look like. Obviously this artwork is finished, but let's say I was compositing something. I'm just going to take my brush here and just brush in some stuff. <laughs> Obviously not for any aesthetic purpose, but just to show you the functionality of this. So I'm basically, showing you, you can composite in the smart object and then you could save that smart object. So while you're in the artwork document, go ahead and press Command S. And that's gonna save the smart object and integrate those changes. And now you can see just how nicely that halftone pattern kind of dithers our artwork and gives us this really nice halftone feel. And having this side by side here is just a really nice workflow to deal with because of course you can save um, your smart object and then see those changes almost instantly in the actual template without having to switch back and forth between the tabs. And I want to show you the possibility with the textures here. So I'm just going to turn one of these on. I'm going to turn this one on, the second one. 
And I'll turn the opacity down just a little bit so that the effect is not too strong. And I'll save the small object by doing Command S again. And we can see those effects take place in our template very nicely. And of course, you're free to use whatever textures you want. I included these in here because I think they both look very good with the template and also give you a pretty good sample of what the texture packs that are referenced are like. But yeah, feel free to drag any textures in here and try those out. I'm going to try out this texture and save the smart object just to show you how that would look. Cool, yeah. So really modular kind of workflow here. And these textures look great. Now I'm going to go back to the smart object and I'll show you what this looks like with the grain pattern instead of the halftone. So I'll turn on the grain pattern here instead of the halftone and I'll save the smart object. And we can see those changes reflected in our template. And now this artwork is dithered using the grain pattern rather than the halftone. And it's a very cool look as well. You know, obviously you'd have to choose which look you'd want depending on the graphic. I think this graphic actually looks pretty good with both the halftone or the grain, but there's going to be some artworks where maybe the halftone or the grain looks better. So that's just obviously your call. And another thing I want to mention about these patterns is that they're completely scalable. So I'm going to go back into the smart object here and I'll open up the pattern group. And as you can see, we have an actual pattern file here. So if I double click on the fill layer, we can now change the scale of this pattern. So if I wanted a tinier grain, then I could change the scale down to somewhere like, I don't know, 67. I'll press OK and I'll save this to show you what that looks like. And as you can see, we've now got that smaller grain taking effect in our template. And this is obviously completely up to you and how it fits within your artwork. Same can also be done for the halftones. So I'm going to turn the halftone pattern size down a little bit, probably to like, I don't know, 60. And I'll save that. And boom. And when using smaller pattern files, especially halftone, it's kind of like the smaller you get, the more detail comes out through your artwork. But I would definitely edge on the side of caution. You don't want to go too small because if you're sending this to print, for example, the halftones just aren't going to come out as nicely compared to if they were, you know, kind of medium sized. You can, of course, also experiment with turning the pattern size way up. So let's say I turn this to, I don't know, 120. And then I save this. That gives us a really cool blown out halftone look in our template. And this is something that you can experiment with in your own artworks. Something you'll notice about the pattern groups is that they have this levels adjustment clips to it. And those are on by default. And all that does is pretty much intensify the look and gets you more detail out of that pattern. So for example, the halftone has this mid-tone offset applied to it. And that's just going to intensify the pattern a little bit more so you get more detail showing in your artwork. And similar deal for the grain over here. You have this multiplier on it, which is just, as you can see here, increasing the contrast and squeezing all those tones in to get you more out of your artwork. All right, cool. Now I want to switch these two documents and show you a little bit more about how the actual template works. Okay, cool. So I'm back in the template here. And this may look just a little intimidating at first because there's all these groups and layer styles here and color layers clipped to the groups, but it's actually super user friendly. And I'll show you that in just a second here. As you can see, we have three groups here that control the intensity and color of the highlights, midtones, and shadows respectively. On top of these groups, we have the color flow layer clipped to them, which allows us to change the color of those tones. So that's pretty straightforward. I mean, let's say we want to change the color of the midtones here from an yellowish orange to, I don't know, something like green. Then we can do that just by going in the color fill layer and choosing whatever we want in this color picker. So a very straightforward process on that. And you can pretty much change how your entire graphic looks just by changing the colors here. So there's just so many options to play with here. You can create like seven different iterations of your artwork using the different colors and different patterns between the halftone and grain patterns and experimenting with different textures and so on. So yeah, color thing is very straightforward. You just go in here and play with these colors as you wish. Now the not tricky part, but the more interesting end of this is when you go into the actual groups of these, you can see we have a threshold adjustment operating here. So there is a threshold adjustment in each of the tonal groups here. And all that does is just change the intensity of that tone compared to the others. So you can see for the highlights here, if I start dragging the threshold slider to the left, that increases the intensity of this tone. You can see it's now pretty much taking up the whole artwork. So I'll drag this back down now, but I'm sure you get the idea. Same thing applies for say the midtones or the shadows. If I want to make them a bit more pronounced, I can go into the threshold value here and I can just drag this to the left. And that is going to get pretty much more of the midtones showing through 
on our artwork. Cool. And I would say that's most of how you use this template, but it's not as of the new update, which now allows you to add multiple hues to your artwork. So something you'll notice right off the bat in this artwork is that we're only allowed three tones or three colors here. And we can't really go beyond that. I'm going to bring up another example here to show you what I mean more clearly by that. All right, cool. So we're now using this picture of Robert Pattinson to display how this template works. And you can see compared to the original image, this pretty much has sort of a similar effect as a gradient map. And we're only allowed three colors here. So we're allowed a shadows color a midtones color and a highlights color. And that may seem restrictive, but what if you can mask out certain parts of the image here, like for example, his red jacket, and then I could control the shadows, midtones, and highlights of that red jacket specifically and independently. Well, that is now a possibility, and I'm gonna show you how. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of match these three colors to his skin tone, because that is pretty much the base colorway that I'm gonna be working off of. But obviously, I don't want this to be extremely accurate because it is sort of an artistic effect, but I do wanna get just a little bit of a more realistic skin tone on this guy. All right, so here's what I've chosen for that. I think this is a nice artistic interpretation of his skin tone here. And now I wanna say, make the background blue or his sweater a more vibrant red like it is in the actual photo here. So we can do that by masking those colors out using the depth tone actions that I provided for you in this template. So if you look over here, we have about four actions here. It's pretty much a set of two actions except for each there's an iteration for the half tone or the grain. So we have create a new hue here. We also have the layer mask. All of this will make a lot less sense if I try to explain it to you. So I'm just gonna show you how this works. So I want this blue background like we have in the image here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our template. And I wanna make sure that I click on the artwork down here. Make sure that you have this layer selected when you're running the create new hue action. So I'm gonna go to this create new hue action and I wanna create that blue. So I'm gonna run this action by pressing play. Here you'll have a little preamble, which you should read so that you don't, you know, fuck up. I, of course, made the actions, so I'm not gonna read this, but you should. I'm just gonna press continue. And here we can now see we're prompted with a dialogue that's going to let us select the hue that we wanna kind of mask out here. So I press continue, and now we have that dialogue. This is actually the same reference photo that I use when creating this action, so it's already perfectly masked to the blue in this image, but for your image, what you want to do is make sure that in this color range panel, you have the select as sample color, which it should be by default. The fuzziness is something that you're going to mess with. And then now you can pick your color that you want to mask out just by using the eyedropper tool here. And I obviously can't really see my image here. So what we could do is mess with the selection preview at the bottom of the dialog here. So if I want to see my whole image, then I just press none. Or if I want to see what I'm masking out, then I press quick mask. And this just shows us the colors that we are currently masking out. Everything that's not red is going to be covered in this red quick mask overlay because that is what we don't have selected. Personally, I just kind of like to go by none and then use this box over here as my reference. Because if you have this set to selection, then it's going to show you what you have selected. So I, of course, want to mask out this blue. So I'm going to use my color picker to pick that blue. But it's not going to pick all of it up at first because this blue kind of has multiple shades and hues within it. So for things like that, you wanna make sure that you use the additive color picker here. And that is just the color picker with the plus on it. So now when you click on a shade or a color, you can click somewhere else and it's just gonna add that color to your selection. As you can see here in the preview box, the more I click around on this blue, the more information we're gathering about it. And of course, if you selected something you don't wanna select, then you can use the subtractive brush. So I just selected that red that I don't want. I'm now gonna to go to the subtractive eyedropper here and I'll get that red out of here because I don't want it in my selection. Then once you're sure you've got your selection pretty refined, you can check that within the selection preview. I'm gonna set this to black matte. And that's gonna show me what I have selected and what I don't have selected is going to be masked in black. So we don't need a perfect selection, obviously. It's never gonna happen with this kind of thing, but we wanna just refine this to get it as right as we can. So I've clicked enough on this blue here, and I'm just gonna play with this fuzziness slider, which controls pretty much the tolerance of how much of that color you want selected. So the more you bring this up into the right, the more transparency and information will be in your selection. And if you bring this down and to the left, you will have just less information in your selection. So I'm gonna find a happy medium here. I'll go with about 
110 and that covers most of the blue that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK here. And as you can see now, we're going to be presented with a dialog that lets us change the size of the halftone pattern that we want. And for this, I would just recommend choosing the same size that you have in your smart object. So whatever halftone pattern size you have in that pattern file in the smart object, you just want to keep the same here. So by default, the halftone size is at 75%. And it is the same in the action. So if you didn't change the halftone size at all, you're just going to go ahead and press continue. If you did, in fact, change the halftone size, then you would enter that same scale in this dialog here. I didn't, so I'm going to press OK. Cool. And as you can see, now we end up with the same template. And now we have a mask in that template that is masked only to the blues of our image. So if I want to change those blues, all I have to do here is go in the template and mess around with these colors. So I'll change the shadows color to a blue. I'll change the mid-tones color to a blue as well. And I don't really think there's any of these highlights popping through in, in our selection here, so I don't really need to change this value. But as you can see, we've changed our mid-tones and our shadows here, and that seemed to do the job for us. I think it was mostly in the shadows here. So the more I mess with the shadows color, the more that blue is going to pop out. Okay, pretty cool, right? So now we have this blue masked out, and it's looking a lot more like the original image. We have multiple hues of a color here. So if we wanted this template to be more faithful to our original artwork, now we can do that as per the new update of Deptone with these actions that allow multiple hues. Now let's see, you didn't get quite the right selection on your mask here. Maybe some of the blue was creeping in to a sweater or something and you don't really want that or maybe just something got messed up within the mask and you want to kind of paint that out of the mask and remove it. For example, say I wanted the blue here out of the mask. So of course the rational thing to do would be go in the layer mask and paint that out. But when you go to do that and you're using a soft brush, the graphic is no longer half in a way that maintains the dithering and zero transparencies on this. And now we can't really send this off to print because it is not half toned and dithered correctly. So I can show you more of a robust example by painting over the background here. When I zoom in, we can see that there's now transparency involved with this, and we can't really send this to print. This is not dithered, and we can't really efficiently color separate that out. So here's the solution to painting within your layer mask here. We could go ahead and use the same soft brush that we were using. Say I want more of a gradient, let's say from this blue to a red here. So I'm going to paint in the layer mask towards the bottom and just kind of make a gradient here. And obviously, this involves transparencies, and we don't want that. So what we could do is dither the layer mask using the same exact halftone pattern that we use for everything else. So if I jump into the layer mask here, you can see that everything else is halftone very perfectly, except for the fade that we just painted in, which involves transparencies. But we want that to be halftone with the rest of the mask. And lucky for you, that is what this action over here is for, the halftone layer mask. Or if you're using grain, it would be the grain layer mask. So what we want to do before we run this action, and make sure you do this before you run this action, is close the group. Make sure you close the group or else this action will not work properly. Close the group or else it won't work because Photoshop is funky. But either way, we want this mask to be halftone, so I'm going to run the halftone layer mask on this closed group. Make sure I have the mask of that selected actually, and I'll run this action. And of course, we get presented with a dialogue here. You're going to read this. I'm not going to read this, but you are. I'll press continue here, and now we get the same thing. It's just telling us to choose the halftone size in the next panel. So once we get this, make sure you set the scale of this to the same scale that you use in your artwork, or else you're going to get some kind of a weird, more conflicting pattern. So just make sure that the scale is the same as you use in your artwork, which by default is 75. So I'm going to press OK here. Cool. And now we can see, I'll press continue to stop this, is that this mask is perfectly halftoned. If I jump into the mask here, it's perfectly halftone, just like the rest of it is. And that just has major implications because you could do this as many times as you want. Let's say you're still not happy with it. You could paint in the mask again with a soft brush and then just run the action again. And it's going to do the same thing that it just did. It's going to half tone the layer mask. Therefore, keeping your artwork dithered and ready for screen print. There's, of course, a slight limitation of this. So let's say midway you wanted to change your artwork from half tone to grain or vice versa. This mask is set in stone. So if you want to change the mask to grain, you're just going to have to redo that mask. So I'll show you what that looks like now. I'm going to go into the artwork here and just change this to grain. And I'll save that. And it won't look too bad, actually. But if you want just a consistent look within the patterns, you should probably make sure to redo the mask so that you get the correct pattern in there. As you can see here, we have our artwork all Xeroxed out. 
and the mask over here is halftone, so we just have to redo that mask with the grain action instead of the halftone action. I'm just gonna delete this duplicate template here and run that same process. The shadows are also very blown out here for some reason. I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna go to the artwork down here, make sure I have that selected before I run the create new hue action, and then I'll play the create new hue grain this time, and I'll read all that. Should be reading all that. Only need to read it once, of course. So now we're at the color range dialog, this blue is already selected for me, so I'm going to press OK. I'll press continue on this. I didn't change the size of the grain, so I'm going to press OK on that. Cool. So now we have the same thing that we had before, but it is now tethered using grain. So check out this layer mask. Pretty cool. Now we can change these values to our liking. And this is just such a cool look, isn't it? I love this so much. This is the best possible update to come to depth tone. And same system follows for this. If I'm not happy with the layer mask, then I can just paint in exactly what I want and then make sure the group is closed before I do it and then I'll run the grain layer mask action okay but that group needs to be closed don't forget it don't come in my dms being like why did it not work you know why the group wasn't closed make sure you read all those prompts that come up at the beginning of the actions they're there for a reason I just want this to work completely smoothly for you so I put those there so you can read it and use this template with no issues. And of course, we could do this for multiple hues in the graphics. Like I said earlier, I kind of want that vibrant red or just a differentiating color for his jacket over here. So what I could do is select the artwork smart object down here, and then I'll go to create new hue, grain. I'll press play on that, press continue, and I'll use the color range dialog to select the red. And make sure you use the additive color picker here so you can gain as much information from that red as possible. So I'm going to click in all the places that I can here. Then I'll press OK on this. And now I could choose the grain size. I'll just press OK on this. And I'll be left with a mask, the template, for that sweater. So now if I go in here and I change the colors a bit, let's say I want a more vibrant red on here, we can do that. And it is masked only to the sweater. There are a few hiccups here, like in the tongue and all. But if you want to get rid of that, you can, of course, just go into the mask, paint what you want and then run the grain layer mask action, or either of the layer mask actions. So I want sort of like a, I don't know, pinkish. I think a pinkish would look cool here. Or maybe a little bit more red. Obviously, pick what you want. I'm just messing around here. And now we have three separate hues with our three separate tonal values, shadows, midtones, and highlights for all those hues separated into three different templates. Pretty cool stuff. And of course, I can go back into any of the templates here and mess with the colors. Say I want a more vibrant red on his face here, then I can choose that because I think that looks better. And I'm happy with this, and I think this is gorgeous. And you should too. This is revolutionary, I promise you. This is an absolute game changer for merchandise designers. And I said that when this template first came out, and that was true. But now it's even more of a game changer because we have these new options with these new actions, and we can create beautiful multicolored, half-toned or stochastic half-toned artworks with ease. I really want to stress the importance of reading what I wrote in the stops for the actions here because I want this to run completely smoothly for you and I want I don't want you to run into any errors. So just make sure you follow all these directions which of course you could read but I'm just going to explain them real quick. So first of all just make sure that when you run the create new hue action that you have your artwork layer selected and also make sure that when you run it you don't have anything that is not the template above the template. So let's say you added like a paper texture in here. Just pretend this white box is a paper texture and you set this to screen or whatever. Just make sure that before you run the action that you hide this. So go ahead and hide that layer. And same would go for any adjustments that you add here. So if you add, I don't know, a hue and saturation adjustment layer on top of this, just make sure you hide that before you run any of these actions. And then after you're completely done, you can turn these back on. But just make sure that when you run the action, these are hidden. One more thing, make sure you do not delete the empty layer mask on the template. That is there for a reason. And if you delete it, these actions over here won't work. So make sure that you have this empty uh, layer mask on the template group up here. And last thing, this actually isn't in the stop, what I wrote in the stop. But when you're in your artwork smart object, make sure that you place your artwork in the art group here. So that is pretty much the bulk of this tutorial. Very cool template that we have here. And I do want to cover one more thing before I end the video, which is just the final step in the template. And that is color separating this to send it off to print. And this is a very simple process just because of how the template works. 
So once you're completely finished, all you have to do is kind of just merge everything into one layer. So I'm going to go into like the top template group here, and then I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut command option shift E, and that is going to merge or duplicate and merge everything visible. So now we have our entire template merged into one layer. We can go ahead and turn off these layers down here. And now I'm going to ask myself what color garment or what color whatever is this going to be printed on. This will be printed on a black t-shirt in my eyes. So I want to remove the black from this. And how I can do that is by taking my magic wand. So I'll press W on my keyboard and I want to turn off anti-alias here and I'll just select the black on this layer and I'll press delete. And now we have the black completely deleted from this layer, but I do kind of want to see what's going on. So I'm just going to create a black background here and move that to the bottom. But that's just so I could see we're going to delete that later anyway. And now all you have to do is just separate all these colors out one by one using your magic wand. Very simple. All you have to do is zoom in here, take your magic wand, select whatever color you want to separate. I'll choose this red first and I'll right click and just choose layer via cut. And that's going to cut our color onto a new layer. I think I selected the yellow here by accident, but whatever. And just make sure you name these layers so you're not confused or hiding and showing each layer to see what you actually did. So I'm going to name this layer yellow and then I'll just repeat the process for all the rest of these colors. So for the red, I'll click that with my magic wand and then I'll do layer via cut. And now I have the red on a separate layer. Just repeat this process for every color in your image. So I went ahead and did that. And as you can see, we have seven colors here. And at this point in the process, you just wanna take a look at the colors and see if there's any that you can combine if they're just really similar in, in tone. So let's say this sign was just a little bit more blue. I would combine the sign with the blue just so I save on screens when I go to print this. The sign is, is too far away from the blue for me to do that. But let's say that was the case, or let's say the red over here was super close in, in color to the pink. Then I was just kind of find a midway color between those two and I would merge these two layers together and make it that one singular color so that when I send this to print, we can save on screens. And one thing that you'll probably notice actually that when you separate out all your colors, that the kind of drop shadow effect that is by default applied to your artwork, when you separate that out, it is kind of an off-white color. And so if you have like an actual white or a different highlight color in your artwork, like I have this white here, that these are two separate colors and this will require two separate screens. But I don't want that. I want to save on my ink here. So what I could do is just combine these. These are pretty close in tone. I mean, it's just an off-white versus a white. So I'll just find like a middle ground for those two. And I'll do that just by grouping these so that it's one color and I'll just name this off white and then I'll add a color overlay layer style on this group and I'll pick a color that I think would fit. So I'm just going to go for a little bit of an off white grayish here. Now as we can see that didn't make much of a difference in how the artwork actually looks. So if I turn the color overlay off, not really much of a difference at all, but we saved an entire screen being burned, let's say during a screen print just by merging these two colors together. So definitely be conscious of that when you're color separating your artwork. All right, and that was pretty much the final step in this tutorial in using this template. So now I would just take all of my color separated layers here, put them in a new document, or just delete these other layers here, and save this as a PSD, send it off to a printer, and you're all good. And it's pretty insane that this kind of detail of a graphic can be printed in this amount of colors. And I think this is just super sick. I mean, complete game changer. Of course, I'm biased towards my product, but I'm just really proud of this. I, I really think this is gonna be a game changer for the merchandise design industry. And it really allows you to get both a creative and artistic interpretation of your design and also have that be completely color separated and dithered for print. And there's no need to send this to a screen printer and have them color separated because we just did it ourselves in that really simple process. And of course the result is also just gorgeous. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you as always for watching. Thank you for sticking with me through this very lengthy tutorial. I'm glad that you did. Thank you so much for your support. This template is of course available on my website if you don't have it already. And if you do have it and you have any questions or concerns or praise, go ahead and DM me on Instagram at Duran Studio and I'll get back to you when I can. So thank you again. Make sure you subscribe and like the video. I post content like this every week to help you become a better designer. Now go make some fire shit. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.